Greetings everyone and welcome back to the Inside EV's YouTube channel. Behind me today is the new Fiat 500e, which is an all new car that is in no way related to the 500 that you've grown accustomed to over the last decade or more actually. It's designed as an EV from the ground up. It has a decent sized battery and it's uh, considerably more plush and premium compared to the vehicle it replaces. When it comes to the look of this vehicle, it's still instantly recognizable, but Fiat has tweaked many of the design details. For instance, the headlights, they still retain their old shape, but now they have this uh, LED brow here that lifts when you pop the hood. And they have these uh, inner rings here, which are kind of cool. They give the car a more premium look. This is where the indicators are. The grille in the front is still open. There's no longer a Fiat logo here. It just is 500. Although they still put a Fiat badge on the back. These little things here are fake. My tester is riding on 16 inch wheels, shot in Goodyear tires, EV specific tires. Sorry about the car being a bit messy, but uh, I did wash it yesterday and then it rained and the road was still wet when I was driving up here. So yeah, and it's a black car. I also really like these uh, wing style uh, side repeaters. They're pretty cool. This car also has electric door poppers. So there's no longer a physical handle. You just press the button and the door pops out. And this is for the keyless entry. Behind here we have a CCS connectors. So this is the European standard, the type two. And what's interesting is that when you have it connected up and charging, you actually get an indicator here telling you how much power is in the battery. You get these nifty 500 logos here in the rear light clusters. It says 500E on the back, kind of a weird logo. You don't really know what to call it. Is this the 500E or the 50E? As I said, here's the, the Fiat logo on the back. I really like these new rear lights. And the whole car from the rear, I think it looks really good and really sporty. And it has the kind of rear spoiler that you would expect to see on an Abarth model. It's really, really big. So yeah, this is it. It's the same recognizable shape that you've known for many years, but it's actually about uh, 10, 8% bigger overall, even taller. When you see it in isolation, it doesn't really look it. But if you park it alongside the older car, you will notice it. Yeah, let's hop aboard. So this is what the interior looks like. It is no longer as unashamedly retro as that of its predecessor, the gas-burning Fiat 500, the new, new 500. You get a digital driver's display here. Let me just turn it on. And a nice little jingle. You get a 500 logo on the steering wheel. There's another one hidden behind the infotainment screen. It says made in Torino here in the door handle. Come on, focus. These are the buttons for the electric door poppers. And in case you run out of battery, there are emergency physical controls here to open the door. Just like in the previous 500, you sit quite high in this vehicle. It's almost like an SUV type driving position. Some people might like it. It's not my cup of tea, but um, 
I don't think I'm among this car's uh, targeted buyers. But what I can appreciate is the overall feeling of quality inside here. It's not a Honda, but it's better than the car it replaces. And they've changed the layout quite a bit. So you now have toggle switches here for the climate functions. You get uh, Aston Martin style uh, buttons for the transmission and a very good Uconnect infotainment system that has uh, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And it's also a more practical car than before because I've had the chance to drive the old 500 for many miles and um, I don't think it's very practical. So for instance, you have this hidden cup holder here that stows away in there but you would probably just leave it open. This is the electric parking brake, the drive mode selector, volume control, Mercedes style. You have this compartment here where you get a 12 volt outlet and a USB and it's quite deep. It's kind of narrow, but it's quite deep. You also get an armrest that you can slide forward and it's actually nicely padded and very, very comfy, which cannot be said of the the one on the door, which is very hard. Some extra padding would have been nice there as well. I'm not going to get into the back because um, it's just as tight as you imagine it is. I don't think there's any more room in the back of this car uh, compared to its predecessor. For instance, the trunk is exactly the same size, even though the car is bigger. It's uh, 185 liters or this much in cubic feet. So the driving modes you have available are normal, range and Sherpa. And the last two modes really crank up the regen braking to the point where you can totally one pedal drive this car. The car also comes with a adaptive cruise control that also keeps you in your lane. And you can set that through these buttons here on the steering wheel. While on the left, you control the Infotainment screen has various functions. That's all pretty good. Oh, and you have a wireless charging pad here that has the, the Turin Skyline. Let me see if I can get it in the frame. That's a nifty touch. And you just put your phone in there and it starts charging. I think that's pretty much it for the interior overview. I'm going to take the car out and tell you more about the EV side of things. Okay, so let's see what this Fiat 500e is like to drive. This uh, electric car is better than the, the gas-burning 500 in so many ways, and I'll list those first. One of my biggest disappointments with the gas-burning 500 is its poor maneuverability and turning circle. You steer all the way and then you expect the car to be incisive and to just move in that direction, but it really doesn't. Whereas this new car is infinitely more maneuverable. It's ridiculously maneuverable. For instance, in the parking spot in front of my building, the 500 usually needs to do a two-point turn before it can actually get out of the parking lot. Whereas this has no problem, I don't even have to apply full lock. So that's good, that's really, really good. I also didn't like that the older 500 didn't have reach adjustment for the steering, which this does, and it just makes the whole car feel more uh, comfortable and premium because not having a reach adjustment is a uh, sign that a car is cheap. Not quite as cheap as the, the Dacia Spring that I drove a week or so ago, because that has neither rake nor reach adjustment for the steering. But um, yeah, this has both. Now, unlike the previous 500E, which was just an electric version of the already existing model, this is new from the ground up and it was designed to be an EV from the onset. That means it gets a pretty big battery, uh, 42 kilowatt hours, whose usable capacity is uh, 
It gets a WLTP range rating of 305 kilometers. And you can probably expect to cover at least 250 kilometers on one charge. Electricity consumption in the city will probably be around the 13, 14 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers mark. Maybe even lower if you pay special attention and uh, use the Sherpa or range modes. There's also a smaller 24 kilowatt hour battery pack that comes with a weaker motor. So this example with the large battery pack has a 118 horsepower motor, while the smaller battery pack feeds a 95 horsepower electric motor. The more powerful variant's uh, sprint time to 100 kilometers per hour from standstill is nine seconds. But as you've come to expect from EVs, the instant punch of torque that you get whenever you, you prod the, the go pedal, uh, it makes it feel faster. And this feels like a 150 horsepower vehicle. I honestly don't feel like it's any slower than the Honda E that I drove a few months back. That car had 154 horsepower, although it was a bit heavier than this. But this feels about on par with that car, even though the Honda E is one second quicker to sprint, on paper at least. The 500E has an 11 kilowatt onboard charger and it can fast charge at up to 85 kilowatts. And at that rate, the battery will be topped up in around an hour from 10 to 80%. If you want to charge it from completely dead to full, it'll take about an hour and a half, maybe a bit more. And as we go over this pretty big speed bump, that I've gone over in the older Fiat 500 many times, it's clear that this new car is so, so much more comfortable. That car was very stiff and very bouncy and uh, not very comfortable, not helped by its driving position, it has to be said. But this uh, new Fiat 500e is way, way more plush. It feels like a luxury car compared to to its predecessor, to be honest. I really like this, uh, this change of formula, especially since the old 500, in spite of its hard suspension, didn't really have amazing body control. So the suspension was stiff, but it still kind of leaned through the bends. I don't know why or how, but it did, and it does. Sadly, I didn't get to drive this 500E out of town on some twisty roads but I have a sneaking suspicion that it too is going to lean a bit. Is this vehicle recommendable? Well, I think so, but you do need to be aware that you're buying an accessory, a fashion accessory, and it is priced accordingly. My tester is not the top of the line trim and it costs 33,000 euros. Thankfully in Romania, the government will pay up to 9,000-ish euros towards the purchase of a new electric vehicle. And the 500e qualifies, so you can get it for around 24,000 euros in Romania, which is pretty good, because for full price, it feels a bit um, expensive, especially considering the kind of materials you get inside the car. And the fact that the Mini Cooper SE exists it does have a smaller battery pack and it can be a bit more expensive, but it's more fun to drive, way faster, and um, the interior is luxury car-like compared to this one, which itself is better than the older 500, but um, I wouldn't call it plush. It is characterful, certainly. It's cool, but it's not quite as um, retro as that of the old car. And it's funny how when Fiat launched the original 500, uh, the new 500, the reborn one in 2008, that car really didn't have any retro rivals. Well, aside from the Mini, but that was a bigger, more expensive car. And now this electric 500 has a direct rival, both in terms of philosophy and in terms of price. And I am of course talking about the Honda E which aside from its lower range, 
is actually better than the Fiat, I think, in every measurable way. And I'd honestly choose that car over this one. Even in spite of its lower range, I would live with it, honestly. It's still a very lovable little car, this, but um, you really need to love the 500 and the idea of a 500 to, uh, to buy this over its rivals. It's competent. You won't feel like you're uh, giving much up, but there are better practical solutions out there. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like it and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. And until the next video, take care.